end in doubts. But if he will be content to begin with doubts, he should end in certainties. A man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live, and is full of misery. He cometh up, and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow. Expecting you, Milo. Is there a difference in the distinction? Morris fish powder does not take bookings, Milo. No need to look so sniffy, Banter. The ambiance is more than made up for by the excellence of its ray of birth. Let us hope the lady also esteems the skate above the surroundings. <clears throat> Must we have uh, this again, Banter? I supposed your lordship particularly partial to the piece. Yes. But, uh, Three times in a row. Try the sherry, my lord. Don't humour me, Hunter. <sighs> this bow tie is a mess. Yes, too perfect. It's quite like a made-up affair. Ah. Hunter, what does the heart mean? I have remarked that on the rare occasions when our song foi does slip, we have a rendezvous with Miss Vane. Bunter, you have a wonderful gift for impudence. Thank you, my lord. Bunter. How's that? Perfect. That is to say, slightly flawed. The sign of a true gentleman. How does Kate wink? Delicious. Don't the capers absolutely make it? Absolutely. How do you suppose it is that capers, liquefied butter, and skate wings come together in such a magical combination? Talking of magical combinations, how about completing the evening and condescending to be my wife? That would be a caper of quite a different sort. We that are true lovers run into strange capers. As you like it, act two, scene four. What if one doesn't like it? Ah, fine. I take it that since I've been away, nothing has changed, and you have no new answer to give me. No, Peter, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't say anything else. It's all right. Don't worry. I shall try not to be a nuisance. But if you could um, see your way to put an up with me occasionally, as you're doing tonight, I'd be grateful. I don't think that would be very fair to you. But that's the only reason I'm the best judge of that. I will, however, continue to propose to you at decently regulated intervals, as a birthday treat, on Guy Fawkes Night. Peter, this is foolish. And, of course, on the Feast of All Fools, but regard it as a pure formality. It would be better that you forgot the whole thing. I thought you had. I have the most ill-regulated memory. When do you go to Oxford? The 14th, I think. 
I'm not sure I shall go, though. Oh, yeah? The warden and fellows of Shrewsbury College, Oxford, regret the pleasure of the company of Miss Harriet Vane at the college, Gordy. Hmm. Why deny them their pleasure? Besides, won't it be fun to see what's happened to your old chums? I often find it hilarious. Not so hilarious to have to face their morbid curiosity about my recent past. It's always there, isn't it? It isn't easy to forget being on trial for murder. Being found innocent doesn't usually make one persona non grata in a place so civilised as Oxford. No, but in a less civilised world, I'm still the subject of newspaper articles and vile letters that slander every area of my life. Particularly this one. I could hardly have hoped that it would be otherwise. But you said nothing, so I allowed myself to be selfish. You know, you'd have been perfectly justified in telling me I was making life more difficult for you by hanging around. Would I? Did you expect me to point out that you'd saved me from the gallows, thank you very much, but left me in the pillory? I shall admit defeat then and uh, say goodbye, shall I? I'm not being very consistent, I'm afraid, Peter. I came here tonight with a firm intention of telling you to chuck it. But I'm damned if I'll have you wiped out by anonymous letter writers. You have got guts, Harriet. Give me your hand and you'll fight the lot of them till we drop. Courage, mon brave. Go to your gaudy. From the Latin for joy. A respectable derivation. So, once a year, you jump for joy. At an Oxford ladies' college? Sir. Yes, I, I think now I really must contact the parents. There, there's another matter outstanding. I really don't think I can overlook this matter any longer. Yes, of course. But please, should you receive payment within a couple of days, I'd be most obliged if you'd let me know. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Yes, thank you, Clary. Oh, no. Um, I wonder, would you mind taking this accommodation list for the Gordy over to Paget in the lodge? Of course, ma'am. Thank you very much. was with it. The blood is on your hands too. Guilty. But this is ridiculous. I mean, to what could it possibly refer? Of what are you supposed to be guilty? Well, of course it's ridiculous, or at least it would be if it weren't quite so revolting. Well, it certainly cannot be regarded as a joke. Oh, what is happening to the college? There's Miss Hilliard, Miss Lydgate, Miss Chilperic, Amy Burrows. They've all had these things. Well, this sort of thing. The police must be called. I'm sorry, but no. I haven't defended the good name of women's education for 20 years to throw away the reputation of my own college by panicking now. Oh, I'm not panicking, Warden. I'm not. It's just that... All right. Then we must set up a committee to deal but with this amongst ourselves. Amongst ourselves. But how, Dean? We are all of us under suspicion. We? Well, of course. Who has access? Certainly all the fellows of the college have, never mind who else. The Gordy is on Saturday. The Gordy? What has that to do with it? Well, a member of the college who was up some years ago, I noticed in your guest list. Yes. Accustomed to dealing in mysteries, as I understand. Mysteries? Mysteries? Oh, Harriet Vane, you mean? Yes, I remember her well. She's an interesting girl with a very good mind, but I don't see... And that upon whose any... tact we might depend. Thanks.
sometime or other, a benefactor should be found to build a monastical college for old, decayed, deformed, or discontented maids to live together in that have lost their first love or otherwise miscarried. Harriet Fane? You don't approve? Oh, certainly not. Apart from her private life, about which I prefer to say nothing, well, she, she writes trashy novels. Well, I must say, I haven't read enough of her work to form a sound opinion. I'm glad, Miss Burrows, you feel morally secure enough to make an implied judgment. I don't care if the vain woman was living with the Sultan of Baghdad, if that's what you mean. I do. The name of the college is something that concerns me. What concerns me is her qualifications for the job, if any. Which of her books have you read, Miss Burroughs? I don't read trash. Oh, <laughs> a very scholarly approach, I must say. You condemn her books without having read them and her morals without knowing anything about them. Oh, good heavens, Miss Lydgate. By her own admission, she behaved in a thoroughly disreputable fashion. Ladies, ladies. Miss Vane has already been tried in public for a crime she didn't commit. We're surely not going to conduct another trial in private, are we? All right. I just put my protest on record. And it is noted, Miss Burroughs. Thank you, Warden. I do not understand why we are so nervous of this letter writer. Well, you know it's not just letters. It's all those other things. They're obscene. They are disgusting. I do agree. I myself feel utterly soiled. Oh, yes, well, thank you, Miss Joe Paddock. My concern is this, Miss Hilliard. Suppose the long-term aim of this letter writer were to bring the college into disrepute. Now, I'd hardly remind you that we were amongst the first generations of women to receive a university education and that there is still enmity towards our aspirations. Mm -hmm. Well, you all know the sort of thing that is leveled at us. Suppressed impulses, soured virginity, unwholesome atmosphere. I won't elaborate. Now, as you know, Shrewsbury College will be very much in the public eye during the coming term. And it is perfectly possible that we could be heading for a profoundly injurious scandal. That, Miss Hilliard, is why I am nervous. Well, then surely we should call in the police. It could be someone within this college. Yes. I fear we have to assume a degree of inside knowledge. One of us. What an appalling thought. Could perhaps be one of the staff. One of the scouts, maybe. The long vacation's already started. At least the undergraduates are ruled out. Except some of the new third years working in the library. Oh, dear, it's all so upsetting. I mean, who could do these things, say these things? Surely they must be mentally sick. Well, that's as maybe, but something has got to be done. The atmosphere of the whole college is being poisoned. Now, I am reluctant to call in the police for the reasons I have given. Now, does anyone else want to make any more points? M Mr. Vine. Now, do I have approval in principle, then, to approach Miss Vane? Mm. Yes. From women's eyes, this doctrine I derive. They sparkle still the right Promethean fire. They are the books, the arts, the academes that show, contain, and nourish all the world. Now, Miss Armstrong, you're in Newport. Oh, what a shame. I did so hope it would be my old drawings. Some of the undergraduates are still in residence, I'm afraid. Doing research in the vax, you see. Well, can't you chuck them out? Newport rooms are much nicer. I know when I'm being smart. Betty! Betty Armstrong! Dorothy! <laughs> Let me see you. You look in fine fettle. Ta. I missed you last time. Oh, poor Machiavelli's desperately ill. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of your dogs. My champion Corgi. Thought we'd lost him. Couldn't leave him. And you? How's the bookshop? Oh, same as ever. Going to the dogs. <laughs> Hello, Paget. Miss Vine. And I had a bet with myself you wouldn't remember. Well, you've lost Miss then, haven't you? I have, Paget, I have. 
And this is your first school this since you went down. Am I right, miss? You're all right. Mm, I know I am. And I've read your books too. <laughs> Old quad, Miss Vane. Haven't you got any luggage? It's in the car. Well, can I give you a hand? No, no, there's no need. Very good, miss. Oh, I nearly forgot. <laughs> miss Vane, the warden has asked to see you as soon as you'd arrived. The warden? Yes, Dr. Baring, miss. Well, she can't gate you now, miss, can she? <laughs> I liked your latest book extremely. I think it overtakes Sands of Crime as uh, my personal favourite. You're very kind, Warden. Sugar? No, thank you. Matter of fact, I rather like it myself, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> had, you, um, had you ever thought to be an academic? You went down with the first, as I recall. It has always had its attractions, I must confess. But I think I lack the necessary intellectual rigour. <laughs> Dean? Oh, thank you. I think you flatter us, Miss Vane. I sometimes wonder if it is not more the wish to escape from the real world than the um, imperative of intellectual inquiry which guides our steps. Don't you sometimes feel that, Dean? Oh, well, the cloister certainly has its charm in an unquiet mm. age. Absolutely. You haven't been to one of our gaudies, I think, since you went out. No. Is it your absence or your presence which is the more significant? Well, to use your own words, Warden, the real world is a very demanding place. And for a woman to make her way in it as a writer, she has to dwell amongst it. Very diplomatically said, but that covers only your absence. Well... Let's just say the world is too much with us. Getting and spending, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a sordid boon. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. Does that answer your question? Rather underrated these days, Wordsworth. Naturally, we, um, we follow the doings of our own graduates with proprietorial interest. The senior common room are particularly keen admirers of your books. Would it, would it be an impertinence to inquire if you use real life as inspiration for your mysteries? Not in terms of plots, no, but in terms of character, yes. I try to deduce behaviour from my observations. Yes, I think that's what makes them so real. I don't ask in idle curiosity, Miss Vane. The fact is that we, the college, has a particular problem. And you, with your particular insights and skills, could very well help us. If you would. Well, what, what is this problem? Well, we have a prankster of a disgusting turn of mind who also writes anonymous notes of a prurient nature. In short... A poison pen. Oh. Is that anything you should take terribly seriously? I mean, wouldn't it be better to ignore it? Oh, one can't, I'm afraid. These are not just jokes in bad taste. The things that are written and drawn are sometimes wicked and obscene, and they are creating the most terrible atmosphere in the college. I do not wish to call in the police. No, I quite understand that. But, Warden, I don't see how I can help, you know. There must be plenty of women in this college better equipped than I know the place, know the people. Assuredly. But whom amongst them shall I ask? No senior member of the common room is free from suspicion. Surely the dean here. <laughs> no, not even Miss Martin. You see, we have discussed this. These things have happened at a time when no one can clearly establish a corroborated alibi. Well, then I think you should get professional help. Who's there? nothing. Oh, you're quite right. It proves nothing. Only that there is a loose floorboard and someone trod on it. But the place is increasingly on edge. There is a, a rising note of emotional strain and I'm very concerned where it might lead. Will you help?
Dean's compliments, Miss, and will you join her for sherry in the senior common room at a quarter to seven? I shall be delighted. Thank you, Miss. You're Annie Wilson, aren't you? You were on the kitchen staff. I was, Miss, yes. But now I wait at Hall in senior common room. It's nice to see you again, Annie. How are your children? They're very well, thank you. Do you know, I'd have thought you'd have forgotten me. Oh, no. You used to leave the battery door unlocked. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, young ladies do tend to have good appetites, don't they? They do, yes. I'll tell the Dean then, Miss. Yes, then, do. Thank you. Fifteen minutes. Constance Purbright has she up in 24, 25? She's not coming, is she? Well, she's not on my list. I wondered had you read her Carlyle. Oh. Carlyle and the Protestant work ethic. Popularist scholarship. Little research and precious little critical judgment. Slipshod, showy and catch penny. <laughs> really shamed of her. Oh, she's one of yours, was she? Yes, alas. But I do believe, poor dear, she's very hard up. Oh, <laughs> Oh, excuse me. My dear, do come and meet people. Now, let me see. Well, I need hardly introduce you to your old tutor, though a former tutor would perhaps be more felicitous. Oh, no, old warden. <laughs> Definitely old. <laughs> Miss Vane, how very nice to see you again. And you, Miss Lidgate. You remember the dean, of course. Yes, we met her. And Mr. Vine, I don't think you do know. How do you do, Mr. Vine? Miss Vane, may I say your books have given me hours of pleasure. Thank you very much. Sherry, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Vine is the new Barraclough fellow. Yes, I remember reading the announcement. Wasn't the election last Christmas? Ah, then you do follow our affairs from the vantage of the real world. <laughs> <laughs> Shrewsbury yearbook is read even there. <laughs> what is your research subject? National finance under the Tudors. We are oh. very honoured to have her. We stole her away from Flamborough. We didn't have to try very hard. I was provost there for three years, and the prospect of a change from administration was too intoxicating to miss. <laughs> Miss Hilliard. Miss Burrows. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Welcome back to Shrewsbury. Thank you, Miss Hilliard. From what I read in the newspapers, you have encountered fame and fortune since leaving us. The latter being preferable to the former. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the two often go together, I observe. <laughs> and uh, did I not also read that you were involved in a real murder case? The, the Wilverkam murder, yes. A sad business, a widow's chance of happiness destroyed by her own son for the sake of her money. Did it give you satisfaction that you were instrumental in sending a man to the gallows? Miss Barton. How do you do? How do you do? I think that's a little unfair, Miss Barton. I found the body. I didn't solve the case. Somebody else did that. I see. Forgive me for saying this, Miss Vane, but after your own terrible experience, it interests me that you care to write the kind of books you do at all. Maybe you're thinking that anyone with proper sensitive feeling would rather scrub floors for a living. Well, I should scrub floors very badly, and I write detective stories rather well. So I don't see that proper feeling stops me doing my proper job. Quite right. Well, everyone, I think dinner awaits. She's so brown. And her frock, so badly cut. 
you can't be naked, be as ill-dressed as possible, I suppose. I sometimes wonder whether a little normal hearty wickedness wouldn't be good for a great many of us. True. I'm afraid I've been very, very tactless. <coughs> My mother always said to me, Sadie, you're the most tactless girl I've ever had the bad luck to meet. <laughs> but I'm enthusiastic. I get carried away. I don't stop and think. I don't consider my own feelings. I don't consider other people's feelings. I just really it. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, right. Rumour has it that Miss Vane has agreed to investigate our poison pen. What do you think about that? First thing I've heard about it. Come on, Harriet. You've got to tell us. Tell you what? You know. No, I don't. It's just vulgar provincial curiosity, Pino. Shut up. What's he like, for goodness sake? Who? Lord Peter Wimsey. Well, he's... I don't know. Intelligent, naturally. Why naturally? Well, he did get a first-class honours from Balliol, so he can't be entirely stupid, can he? It's not much to look at, I suppose. He got a DSO during the war. He's musically knowledgeable, reasonably kindly. Otherwise, he's entirely intolerable. How's dog breeding? Booming! It's all a question of genetic selection. Fellows, members of the college, as no mere annual ritual, but in genuine gratitude and respect, I give you the founder. The founder! The loyal toast. The king! What are you staring at? The scouts. What they must think of us all, God only knows. On behalf of all the fellows and myself, I bid you welcome. I sometimes feel, as must the parson in his pulpit, approaching dismay at the annual obligation to produce words of comfort and joy. <laughs> Let me today speak of Oxford which has been called the home of lost causes. If the love of learning for its own sake is a lost cause everywhere else in the world, let us see to it that here, at least, it finds its abiding home. Yeah. 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 The last to leave, disgraceful. Like throwing out time at the pub. I must say, I rather enjoyed our conversation. Might almost be term time. Yes. And if you were to listen at those windows, you'd find it was a middle age you were making all the noise. <laughs> the old ones have gone to bed. The women of 40 are pretending to be undergraduates again and finding it rather an effort. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Vane, I admired you for speaking as you did earlier this evening. Detachment is a rare virtue, and very few people find it lovable. If you ever find a person who likes you in spite of it, or still more because of it, that liking has very great value, because it is particularly sincere, and because with that person you need never be anything but sincere yourself. That's probably very true, but what makes you say it? It's only that I imagine you've come across a number of people who are disconcerted by the difference between what you do feel and what they fancy you ought to feel. It is fatal to pay the slightest attention to them. Yes, but I am one of those people. I disconcert myself very much. I never know what I do feel. I don't think that matters, provided one doesn't try to persuade oneself into appropriate feelings. Yes, but you have to make some sort of a choice. And between one desire and another, how is one to know what things really are of overmastering importance? We can only know when they have overmastered us. Good night. Good night.
very few people find it lovable. I disconcert myself very much. I never know what I do feel. style of Fred and Adele, I think. Your Fred, maybe. My Adele, no. No, thank you. I'd love some more tea, though. Mm. Need some more water. You know why I'm so happy. Are you? Good. You know why? No. Do you realize, Harriet? I may, if you continue. Thank you. Well... Is it so difficult? Yes. Well, you can't just start to say... Do you realize? You said that. Today, you have the impulse to telephone, which can only mean that you felt relaxed and carefree and ready for the wit and epigram that only I can provide. Tell me I'm right. I presume too much, haven't I? Only half presumed. It uh, would be nice if you could assemble occasionally. You're making me feel awful now. At least I've stirred you to some emotion. That's not fair. I'm paying you the compliment of having... Yes, 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 yes. My beastly spasm is over, honestly. Did 
tell her. What's the matter? I'm not sure I should. Tell me your tango. You know I can't tango. Then you've no choice, have you? This is in the strictest confidence. Oh. The Gordy, I didn't tell you what happened. There have been some nasty goings on. Have there? Anonymous letters, obscene drawings, that kind of nonsense. Directed against you? Only partly. It's been going on for some months, apparently. And then this morning, when I woke up, I found this on my bed. God, what luck. The warden thinks that because I write mystery novels, I can somehow pinpoint the culprit. But I feel dreadfully ill-equipped. After all, I'm no criminologist. So, you may in time have to come to your wise old uncle. Yes, with great reluctance, I may. Happenings like this at a ladies' college, it's hardly surprising, is it? Ladies' college? What do you mean? Mm. Academic ladies cloistered together, celibate, some sexually ambivalent, uh, bound to throw up the odd hysteric. Peter, I don't believe what I'm hearing. Can you? No. This male, this mighty male attitude. I knew I shouldn't have told you. Harriet, I express no male bias. You must know me better than that. I'd say the same about um, public schools, monasteries, any close society. I'm sorry, maybe I'm oversensitive on the subject. Well, of course, sir. Um, if it comes to it, I'll help. Though, uh, I do have to go away. Away? Mm, a day after tomorrow. Um, Harris, Rome, it's, uh, it's rather important. Is this the foreign office? Hmm. Of course, if you need me, you can always get me through the embassies. Now, teach me to tango. Who's that? Who's that? I do hope I don't disturb you, Miss Vane, but... Um, 
Well, things have taken a turn for the worse here, I'm afraid. Oh. Could you? I can't tell you how grateful we would all be. Mm. Midday, then. Goodbye. She's motoring down. Oh, I do hope we're wise. It's either Harriet Vane or the police. Mm. If this gets out, the place will be thick with reporters. Do we really want that? Excuse me, my lord. Will you be requiring the correspondent shoes in Paris? My lord? <clears throat> you have a cough, Bantam. I don't think so, my lord. I distinctly heard it. Cab drivers linked us just the thing for it. I shall bear it in mind, my lord, should I ever get one. See it off in no time. The shoes, my lord, will you be requiring them? Bunter, I know that when sorting out imbroglios abroad for the Foreign Office, I am required to adopt the role of professional funny man. But high comedy is the required style. Funny footwear in this context would be appropriate only for the end of the pier. Might we not be weekending with the first secretary in Montal, my lord? Does Monton have a beer? Be that as it may, I think given the grim nature of this particular assignment, it is highly unlikely that we'll be weak ending at all. However, let's be optimistic and reserve them for the Oxford High. So we are going to Oxford as well, my lord? The thought occurs, given a fair wind and a following sea. Very good, my lord. I shall remember to pack the seasick pills. Banter. That is bordering. Bordering. Academic ladies, cloistered together, celibate. Some sexually ambivalent, bound to throw up the odd hysteric. It's enormously disturbing. Well, at first one might have dismissed such things as too trivial to be much concerned about, but, well, they become more audacious every time. Last night, someone could have been killed. But you still haven't called in the police? No. Paget extinguished the flames, but of course the whole college knows about it. Couldn't fail to. I don't know how much longer we can contain the matter. Or indeed should, if matters continue to get any worse. Mm. Oh, the Dean has a point. If we don't take action now ourselves, soon it'll be out of our control. You are asking a lot of me, Warden. I write detective stories. That doesn't make me a criminologist. But you were at this college. You know some of the tutors and some of the domestic staff. You're intelligent and observant and... Well, you are a woman. You think it's a woman? Well, then. Uh... Circumstances seem rather to exclude men from the inquiry. I mean men running about the college at night. Is it likely? Oh, I can't agree with you there, Warden. I'm just look at the state of that book. It is sacrilegious to do that. Yes, I see your point, Dean. It is a distinguished polemic against the accepted view of women in a male-dominated society. And all the other things that have happened, they all point to masculine spite against the educated woman. Yes, but even so, the difficulty remains. A man here, conspicuous always disguise himself as a woman. Yes. And he could easily hide in the grounds before the main gate was locked at night and get away again in the morning. It has to be a possibility. Mm, that it doesn't quite have the male touch. What do you mean by that? Well, there is a quality of what one might consider feminine insight to these happenings. The female of the species is more deadly than the male. Mm, Kipling had it nicely. Speech that drips, corrodes, and poisons. Even though he was referring to a female cobra. Or do we disparage our own sex, oh, It's a fair poetic comment, I suppose. But what woman would want to destroy a book like that? Ah, oh, unhappily, all we have is questions. It occurs to me that if I were to be of any use to you as an investigator, I should need some plausible excuse for spending time here. Yes, of course. Uh, oh, what about Miss Lydgate and her book? 
A very plausible excuse. She's always in need of editorial assistance. She's writing a book on the metaphysical poets. That's a possibility. Well, thank goodness it's the long back, so there isn't much going on. Um, well... Yes, I'm afraid there will be. We have an event fast approaching. My illustrious predecessor's portrait is being unveiled in the library by the Chancellor, no less. I see. Well, maybe I'd better start asking questions. Mm -hmm.